rule of the minority, majority firm, which are the white firms, okay? So all I kept seeing was a sea of white people, and very few black people were a sea of white people. So I just sat there, and I didn't wear a badge, but everybody came up to me. No, nobody would speak to me. They wouldn't even speak. They wouldn't even speak, okay? Some of these guys, they wouldn't speak. So I just sat along the wall, and I'm like Shalanda. I don't talk unless I know you. If I know you, I will talk to you. If I don't know you, you're not going to get nothing out of me because I'm observing the room. And that's what you guys got to remember. Know your audience. Know who you're talking to. Don't forget where you came from. Because where you came from is going to get you where you're going. So history is important. And I'm a starch believer that. My mentor is my mother. So don't be afraid to say your parents are your mentor. My mother is where I'm at. My father always told me my mouth is just like my mother. So I didn't speak to nobody. So they didn't know who I was. So they won't bother me. So when they came to do business with the city of Philadelphia, I'm sitting here, and they sit here. So I'm the first person at the table of nine. So they had to look at me, and everybody's like, and I'm like, <laughs> So then I found out about NAS, and I seen the minority people. And I was like, oh my God, we are here. So we are in this business, and we are doing it is what I meant. Not that we, you know, so we're doing it, and we're conducting ourselves. My problem with my people, we forget where we came from. And that's what the gentleman said. So, so he said, Lou and Chu, everybody said, no, he didn't. No, he didn't. There's nothing wrong with Lou and Chu. There's nothing wrong with what you do. As long as she, what she said, you conduct yourself accordingly, right? And you have to be confident. Like Steve said today, relationship is where that. My rule of thumb, my mother said to me, taught me, and this is what got me. You treat people like you wanted to treat. They ain't always going to do it, but as long as you're doing it, you can carry yourself that way. And you have to be respectful. Don't hurt to say hello. Okay? Don't think you're smarter than the boss. Because you are smarter than the boss, don't put it in the boss's face. Because they ain't going to like it. I'm just going to tell you that. And every job ain't yours, and that's what I tell these old folks in ass. Every job is not yours. Reach out and help somebody. Okay, I got an internship. I got three of them. But maybe they can help my friend over here. That's right. So I got a friend that's looking for an internship. You think you can help them? That's what you do. You reach out and help somebody because somebody can help you along the way. So eventually, I would walk around for years with no badge and nobody didn't know who I was. My other trustees were where they badges, so everybody was flying up to him. I mean, we was at dinner one night. This guy fell down on his knees talking business to my girlfriend. Well, she's my girlfriend friend. But I was sitting there like just eating, and everybody was saying, why are you even talking to you? I said, because I don't know I am. I said, because all I want you to do is speak. Hey, Carol, how are you doing? Hello, Miss Coots, how are you doing? Nice today, the weather. Speak, like she said, and then you'll learn that person. Because I wanted to learn you as a person besides a business person. Because that tells a lot about you. To me, that's, that's what I talk about. It. And it has worked for me. Reverend Elijah Morris and I worked together with the city of Philadelphia. That's where I met him at. So, and he was a great help to me. So, like she said, mentors come in every form. I thought, I have a degree in accounting from the South University. And I'm sorry, but I'm a Lincoln grad. It's all right. We <laughs> and, um, and I went back and got my degree at Lincoln, my master's. And I thought I wanted to be involved in the union, but because I was an accountant, I couldn't do that. And that's what they say, don't shut, don't cut, don't, don't shut yourself short. And the, the guy said to me, oh, you can be in, a, in the union, we have accountants, well, they have treasurers. Then I became a treasurer in my local, like Sue Elijah, and I was there a long time, but I also represented people against management. But I try to do a good job at being fair to everybody, and that's, that's the best thing. Um, love yourself. First of all, love God and love your parents. If you can't respect your parents, you ain't gonna respect nobody. All right. That's the bottom line. I'm just, I'm just gonna say that. And, it, and it's all right not to agree with your parents because you're growing up, but it's the way you have to talk to your parents. And I tell my children that yes, I have, and we fight every day, and this is what it, but I'm the youngest out of nine, so I've seen a lot. So I became my niece's mentor. So I'm very close to, with my, I'm very close to my nieces than I am with my um, sisters, but now we're getting better at that. Another thing I want to say, what Steve said was right, is um, your dress means everything. When you go to meet an employer now, I'm going to tell you a quick story. So, 40 years, the city was my, wasn't my only employer, but I worked in the factory because, and you, how can I say this? It's easier to get a job employed than it is unemployed. 
Right. So the road to what you ask Steve is employment. So it may not be what you want, but you're going to try it out. And it's all right to know because then you learn about different things. I started out in the factory because my mother rule of thumb is once you graduated and you didn't want to go to college, then you had to get a job to take care of you because her taking care of days was over. And I thought because I was a baby, <laughs> I could sit. So she said, you got a job yet? I said, mm-mm. She said, okay. She came on the Friday and said, you got a job yet? I said, mm-mm. She said, yeah, Monday you go with me. My mother worked in the factory all her life. And I'm proud of that because it raised nine children, okay? But she knew what she wanted. So she said, you want to go to, I said, in the factory? That's what I did her, in the factory? You want me to go to work in the factory? She said, well, that factory took care of you all your life. I said, hmm, now, I got up that morning, 6 o'clock. My mother didn't have to work 8, but we had to leave the house at 6 to work in the factory. So I worked there a couple of days, a couple of weeks, but I was too fast for the old people, so they had to lay me off to see it. <laughs> so anyway, I started, but then I went to get the job, I went to work for the city. And I had to consult my mom. The city, the, the federal government, the state all called me the same day. And I consulted my mom where I should go. And she told me to go to the city because they had better benefits. So that's what I did. And my thought was to go to the city, work 20 years, and then go work for the federal government and get enough pension. But by that time, their pension became, so I stayed with the city. And then I was involved with the lives with the union and stuff like that. And I liked what I was doing. I like helping people. I really do. I don't know if that's all I meant to do, but I like helping people and I like the outcome. Not to pat myself on the chest or like that. I just think we gotta help each other. If we don't help each other, then who is gonna help us? Is what it is. But so I was up for promotion, is what I'm saying. And they told me the promotion was mine because it was like I was working out of class, I was working in this field, I came as a captain trainee. You're working with budget assistance, so you can automatically get automatically get the promotion. Well, another department over here starts shutting down. So they said, we got to bring them over here. I said, y'all want to just take my promotion like that? So we're going back and forth. I mean, I had to literally fight. But like they said, you got to do your homework. So I knew a girl on personnel, and I knew a girl on finance. Personnel is where they scored a test of that. So I had to find out who was on the list, who was above me, who was below me. But they kept telling me I wasn't reachable. So I had to go back and say to my boss, I'm fighting for my job now. I said, I'm reachable. I don't know who you're talking to, but my sources tell me I'm reachable. They went back and did their homework, I was right. So it ain't what you say, it's what you know and how you say it. So if you want to challenge your boss, have the information. So I had the information, I was right. So I had to interview for my own job. And like he said, it's always a solution. I went out and bought me a brand, I went to Catholic school, I was raised by the nuns, yes. I went out and I bought me a brand new outfit. I act just like I never knew this man in my life. I dread, when I spread in the next day, he almost fell off his seat. I sat there, when you go for an interview, like you say, you feel good, so you look good, you sit up. And I did like this. And I did like this. And you direct contact. See, my thing is you can't look me in the eye, something wrong with you. So if I'm asking you a question, you down here and you down there, I don't even want to hire you. I mean, you don't lost that. Look me in my eyes, fake it out. And if you don't know, it's okay. But I set up like this, and I talked to him, told him I was a team player. I'm willing to help, do anything he need me to do. I'm good on this project. Like he said, I knew what they wanted. I'm good on that project. And I don't mind working down it. That's where you need me to be at. And I left. Thank you for interviewing me. And, but I knew the guy that interviewed me was uh, not that worthy, but he was white. And the white man had started speaking up on his behalf. So I had to go do my homework on him. And I said to my boss, stupid me, you don't want to, you don't know what he's doing? You don't want to do this? Well, I heard none of them over there know what they're doing. I'm like, oh, really? But I did my good and I came back. So they had to get a girl to come in so the interviewer, the sonographer walked past my office Cause I'm still there. She walked past my office. She said, "See, that's relationship. Because I talk to everybody. I don't care who you are, and I ask questions and I try to help out." She said, and before I could call her, she called me. She said, "If they don't give you the job, let me know. I got to make that guy could not interview one iota." 
But unfortunately, I mean, fortunately, my boss was fair, and he came back, he gave me the job, and he did apologize. And he said that I was right, the guy was not a quality. But I had to do my homework. I'm newsy, I'm gonna tell you. My, and they tell you, I'm newsy, because I want to know. But I'm also helpful. As an accountant, I'm an accountant. We have clerks below us. I don't think I'm above the clerks. I would get down there and help the clerks. I have done that. I went over there and sort payroll, sorted checks, put them in order. My boss came to me and said, that's clerical work. I said, but I gotta get paid just like they gotta get paid. That's right. So I want my paycheck that's just right. like they want their paycheck. Help one so another. I help out. His position was, I don't want you doing it. So I couldn't do it because he didn't want me to do it. But I did it for as long as I could do it. I didn't forget my other skills as a typist. I started out as a typist. I still type to the day. So when my boss needed some input in the computer and they didn't think I could type when he walked away, I just went to the computer and started typing. He came back and was done. So, and it's not, and it's, you know, and that's what I just want to say. Like, don't forget where you come from know, and know where you're going at. Know your audience, but watch your back. Okay? Help people, but be mindful of who you help. Okay? Body language, to me, is so important. I don't know what it is. Because somebody can tell you one thing, but their body is saying a whole new story. So you have to understand that. You have to learn to read that. Okay? And first impression is important. And I want to thank you all for the day. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> 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 <laughs>